and welcome back everyone to the independent investor channel for a very unique opportunity a panel discussion and reaction on the webinar that was hosted by upper management for aduro clean technology we've got a group here of who's who uh, in our close network of those who closely follow the story uh, as we close out 2023 and enter into 2024 very exciting times uh, joining us uh, here is Penny Queen, and I'd like to, without further ado, turn it over to her to get her uh, natural reaction to many of the takeaways that a lot of us were able to take away from the webinar earlier on this week. Penny, welcome to the channel. Merry Christmas to you. I'll kick it over to you. Oh, Merry Christmas. Um, you know, it, it was just further confirmation. I, I think... Anybody who's following Aduro closely, which I believe most of the retail investors are, I don't think people are investing in Aduro the, the way they invest in, in other stocks. It's not random. They're doing research. They're following the company. So I, I think for everyone that watched, it was confirmation of everything we've seen throughout the year. What they say they're going to do, they do. Uh, they do it at the speed that they say they're going to do it and everything is always better than described. So uh, the, the big thing for me, to, as they were talking, you know, about their progress through shell, um, Mary, your, I had to steal your line that they have failed to fail. I not, I I've talked to people within uh, people that were with the game changer program before, and they, they confirmed my suspicions that it is set up as a gauntlet, that those first few stages are very difficult and not a lot of technology makes it through. So earlier in the year when we when we had the update that they, you know, going on to phase four, that was that was really big for me because, you know, the fact that they're allowing Aduro to use the name really, you know, to talk openly about that is massive. I mean, the the new customers that the client engagement program, every time there's an announcement that they're adding someone, it is someone big and they're being vague as they have to be because in, you know, in the, in the small cap, it hell, even in the large cap and the uh, venture capital world, the names are very important. And it's something that the companies, the bigger companies trade with and uh, having one allow you to use the name is so big, but to know that the other companies involved are multi-billion dollar companies, it really doesn't take a lot of work to, to narrow it down and have your list of suspects. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not put out who I think those companies are, but I think I've narrowed it down to about six. And you know, it's it's pretty um I think if anybody really looks at the facts they have, they'll they'll get they'll narrow their suspicions down too. So I'll, I'll just say overall, it was a great confirmation. What I know about the company is that the technology is solid. We're hearing more and more, you know, when you hear from Eric Appleman, you know, that it's better than he thought it was. And it was enough for him to leave his very, very solid and secure job. Um, I am just excited that I, that we as investors are having access to what what truly is a venture venture capital uh, opportunity here. I mean, it's not. I, I'm not looking for just a double here. So, there we go. That's that's my review. Excellent, um, Mariush. What was your uh, initial reaction uh, on some of the wave tops that were provided in the webinar this week? Well, for me, when I was listening to it, I actually texted uh, Yazan while the, uh, the webinar was going on. And I just said, uh, uh, Eric is amazing. It's just like you listened, you listen to this guy and you realize what you're sitting on. It, it's just, it's just unreal. But I, I, I do want to talk a little bit about you know the the sentiment and a little bit about the stock price because uh, Adura stock price has performed quite well in this environment in comparison to other micro cap or small cap stocks and because the other stocks have been absolutely decimated 80 90% down 
that impacts Aduro because even if people believe in the story, even if people want to get shares, they have been so decimated that they're out of liquidity. And that's what I see over and over and over. Yeah, I like the story. I like what they're doing. I'm a little skeptical, but I'm just out of money. And if I may just uh, inter interject here, I, I think to your point, Marish, um, what I've seen is literally the fact, and this is not me, like I've, I've shared with you and Penny and Ryan um, different videos by Canaccord and, you know, the bigger kind of players in the micro to mid cap uh, space. And you will see that all of them have said we have not witnessed eight or nine subsequent quarters where we see drawdown after drawdown. These bankers and these brokers are broken. They all have, I know for a fact that, for example, Canaccord had to lay off seven people um, this year. They, you know, this is, this shows you how tough it's been in this market. So what has happened is, as you're saying, Mary, issues. I think for the last two years, a lot of people got decimated. And naturally what happens is when they see a winner that they have, what they do is they're like, okay, well, I want to hedge my bet. So they participated in the 93 cent raise. They're going to sell, um, you know, if they're up 20, 30%, they probably don't even follow what the doer is doing. They're, what they're trying to do is they're just trying to massage their account uh, or their clients accounts because they're trying to go back to them and say hey we are not that bad we've you know we have done some performance for you and that unfortunately hurts a stock like a duro um but it's it's very temporary the other thing that comes a lot again to the share price is guys look there, there's you know a few million shares between warrants and options i think my count is about six million according to the last financials that they had that are in the money now the 50 cent ones they have till 2025 the the one dollar ones they have till april so the way that i look at it it's an opportunity if it's six million shares roughly in total it's an opportunity for the people that are now able to come in and buy in at these levels if that was not there, you would have paid way more. That's the reality. Now, um, the, the other thing is, remember, a lot of people come and say, you know, if there were like more institutional buyers and, you know, that would give us, you know, the confirmation that we want and things like that. I've covered this so many times when we talked. Um, I, I recall when I mentioned to marriage before, there is kind of a certain requirement, a certain market cap that allows institutions to come in. And that's just a matter of uh, sizing. So imagine if you are an institution and you want to buy, you know, uh, if you have a hundred, uh, four, four or $500 million under management and you want to buy 1% of the portfolio in Aduro, you cannot buy four or $5 million worth of Aduro in the open market. You can't. You're going to pay up significantly. So what they do is they wait for a certain market gap, a certain liquidity, or a certain, um, uh, some of them they say we want you on NASDAQ because it's way more liquid. So it gives us an opportunity to be ahead of the curve. Um, I did share with you guys earlier this morning a an article on Forbes talking about the theme. And this is, to me, to go back to my, you know, all throughout 10, 15 years of investing, I always think if you're ahead of the curve and you find the themes, a lot of your mistakes or a lot of the company's mistakes can be forgiven. So if you were in any telehealth stock during COVID, you had a lot of upside, which we did. I had a couple of those and they did significantly well. If you were in, um, mind you, the cannabis play in the early 16s, 
you had a lot of room to succeed because no matter what they do, the theme worked. This year, if you were in AI, you know, it, it gives you a lot of legroom. Now, with Aduro, we have a theme that the big boys are talking about. We're not talking about, you know, the three of us here. We're talking about the who's who are basically saying that this is a theme that we want to invest in. And I think, Ryan, you pointed out that there, there's a plan to invest up to $100 billion into recycling by the, you know, by the majors. Now, do I want to wait to till the point where this becomes main, mainstream and there is an ATF and there is no, you want to be ahead of the curve. And, and the other thing is, do I want to be ahead of the curve with already, a, you know, a, a, like a company that has a billion dollar market cap? Realistically, no. I, I mean, we want to have the biggest alpha and to catch the biggest alpha, we have to accept this volatility. We have to accept that, you know, there, there might be a raise in, um, in 2024. So what? If they add another 5 million shares, that's okay. But the reality is you're going to be able to make that in multiples. And I, and I truly believe in it once this thing is, once we get a tape on microcaps again, and I believe we will in the next, you know, called 12 plus months. But I also think the theme becomes very important because right now it's not a crowded theme, meaning you don't have many public companies that have a unique technology that have proven technology. And, you know, that's the other point that, um, you know, Mario and Penny covered in yourself. Um, that is trading at, at, you know, 77 million Canadian or sub 70, 60 million US. These are very unique propositions. And I think people should look at the other side of the trade, not just why is, you know, someone selling here? You should look at it, okay, well, I've got an opportunity and it could be a limited time opportunity because we don't know once these shares, the warrants are out. You know, imagine this, like let's let's argue for a minute and I don't know, but for a minute, let's say that one of these four multi-billion uh, companies or the 20 companies that are that Eric mentioned that are uh, highly interested. Imagine if one of these guys comes in and says, you know what, we are going to sign a partnership or we're going to do a license deal, even though it's earlier. They could do that because these bigger guys, they, to them, throwing few a few million bucks is a small um, way to kind of for them to uh, be ahead of the curve and to lock in um you know to lock in themselves at an earlier or better terms than the others so do you want to wait to play this game of like i might game the the entry i don't think you can because you can't build enough size in the stock anyway doing that i just like i'm 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 being honest i i don't know if you can buy today few hundred thousand shares without impacting the stock. Uh, I'll stop here and hear what, what does just, well, just and- to, Mario, just give me, give me one sec to interject here. I, I think it's important for viewers to understand and Yazan, you hit the macro just perfectly, but chair pal just said it on the last fed meeting when it kind of released a little bit of euphoria into the market, signaling where we're going to go in 2024 but secretively and nobody is talking about the emergence of the russell 2000 uh, it's now matched the returns of the nasdaq just he- here in 2023 and it's made it up in the last few weeks so i, I think we need to be very very careful in th- referring to a a micro cap and a small cap space that over the last couple of years has been quite frankly discarded um, that has shifted and i reserve the, the right to be wrong on this a little bit 
but it's it's fair to acknowledge a little bit of positive breath in the space that over the last 24 months to say has really been discarded. Mariusz? I wanted to go back to um, one piece that Eric Appelman said, and it kind of go ties back with what Yazan was saying. He was talking about uh, most of the companies using, you know, 100-year-old technolo technology and just, you know, improving it a little bit. And he was talking about there's 70 companies that are all doing the same thing. And there's one, Aduro, that has, you know, unique technology with a unique solution. And, and it's just like, it's one thing if this statement came from Offer, right? He's been doing this for so many. This is a guy that, like as Penny said, left a stable job. Uh, was skeptical, thought that they were going to fail, didn't think it was going to work, telling us that, you know, he's aware of all the technologies out there because the place that he worked at, Brightland, that's what they do. That that was their job to know all the players and what all the players have to offer. And he came out and says, 70 technologies are out there. We are one of one. We are the best. And there's nobody that comes even close to us. Nobody. And we're sitting at a 60 million market cap on a technology that solves a worldwide problem. It's it's truly unbelievable. Penny, you know, we we talk about the the stock price a lot, and I know that everybody here is watching it pretty pretty consistently. I'm looking. I want to see what the volumes like. I want to see. You know, I want I want the stock to be where it deserves to be. But maybe I'm a little bit greedy because I do not mind this slow approach. Because every time the company proves a little more, I know that we are going to move up and we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a new bottom. It's going to happen every time. But in between that space, you know, like um a big company can't come in and pick up 5 million shares, right? Well, a retail investor also can't come in and pick up everything they want all at once without bumping the price up. But every day you can pick away at it. And that's, you know, I, I doubt there's anybody here in this virtual room that hasn't increased their holdings this year, right? So as much as I want the company to be recognized for just how good and how different it is, like if it takes the world a little while longer to wake up, that's okay with me, right? Hey, what, what do we have? Three rate cuts coming, right? Something like that. Okay, so you know this 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 space is going to get more active. There's going to be more eyes on it. Go ahead, take your time. I'll I'll just stack my shares. That's fine. But you know when we talk about how different it is, this is the it's the science of it that that enthralled me the first time. You know, I, I would say there were two things that really got, got me in. One, understanding, you know, uh, with a background as a firefighter, pyrolysis is, you know, that was, I got it. And when they explained to me how they were basically taking these molecules apart in this very accurate way, leaving much longer, more useful, more valuable chains, it made perfect sense, but that it's lower heat, it's lower pressure and massively higher yield. If I were a Dura, I would be pounding the table on that. I appreciate that they are a lot of engineers and, and that is not their, it's not their way, but it also brings me to the other part that I appreciate maybe even more about the company because, you know, we all invest in the small cap space. So we've all been burned. We've all seen companies fail to execute. We've all seen them flat out lie. So to have a company that integrates their, you know, they don't earn shares except for when they are doing what they said they would. And they laid it all out before they even went public. They said, this is what we're going to do. This is when we're going to get our, our ownership. You don't see them selling shares. You see them, you know, exercising options. So that to me is all the confirmation I need and watching the team grow with who's being added. So I cannot wait for the next name drop though. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm really waiting for, uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep buying all the way. So. 
Yeah, I, I want to, I mean, the, this is a great segue to, to something I wanted to go back to because we keep getting, I, I think Mariush, Benny, Ryan, everyone comes to, people say, well, we don't know for a hundred percent sure that the technology works. And I'm like, really? You don't know after, you know, they passed the midpoint of get a game changer with Shell. And they said, as you guys mentioned, like they said clearly the point of the midpoint was to force it as much as possible to fail and to fail to fail. Then Eric Appleman, two years watching in front outside, then said, I haven't seen anything similar to Marius's point, 70 other technologies. And they keep, they, they beat them by miles, not even closely. And again, I want to remind your audience, guys, we're talking about technologies that are, some of these are billion dollar companies and they are failing. And yet people are buying their shares because they they believe, you know, this. I, I'm going to say the, the idea that, that the theme is going to have a significant impact. So they're going to see a big alpha on their, on their investment. So that, that's something, you know, to, to be aware of. But the other thing is the, the concept that, you know, when you have a company, a multi-billion dollar company, like let, let's, ourself, as Eric said, put yourself in the customer's shoes. If you are a multi-billion dollar company and you started testing with Adore, if you're not seeing something significant, why go four and a half X your budget on testing? Why? Like, I don't know why would anyone come and say, you know what? I don't like the results, but I'm just going to go five X my, um, you know, spend just to see maybe it works on other feedstock. The, the reality is the following. The, that article I mentioned, maybe uh, Ryan, if you can, at the end, just include it in the, at the bottom. The article by Forbes was saying, that one of the biggest challenges that um, the recycling industry faces is that they're all competing for the same feedstock, which results in that, that same feedstock being becoming more expensive, resulting in recycling companies um, having shrinkage in margin. Aduro doesn't need that. Aduro is in this nice space where They'd love to take all that feedstock that no one wants and they can handle, you know, and, and contaminated, um, mixed waste plastic, things like that. The, the issue is that the others, the pure cycles, the agelics and the other 70 technologies, they need the cream of the crop. They need the sub 20% feedstock. That's what their technology can work on. So, you know, we, I, I think this is a lot of like, it gives us a lot of room. As I said, what, one of the biggest things in investing early is, is that you want to have so much room for downside protection. Well, we have so much room for downside protection. Let me also use it, you know, what, what Airhead said. Like Airhead flat out started by three, dollar to five and then they moved it to 382 560 or something like that Canadian in 12 months that's a 270 to 400 percent on you know if if you have the right size that's you know that's significant return but they also mentioned a hundred million dollars at that point that was like you know a few months back in IP you know like we're not even a hundred million market cap like right now, we're 77 Canadian. Like, it is mind boggling how much scrutiny there is because exactly what Penny mentioned. A lot of people got burnt on other names. So they are putting significant um, rigors. And I appreciate, Ryan, you being, you know, very balanced in the way that you talk about technology. But at the same time, like we can't hide from the facts in front of us. The facts shows us that no matter how we slice this thing, it's undervalued. Now, 
do you want to be that person that waits and waits and waits till you get your confirmation? Sure. I mean, we can't tell you what to do. And we're not financial advisors and, you know, the same story we own shares. So we're biased and all that, you know, um, commentary that we have to say. But having said that, you know, like the opportunity is there for the taking and it it may or may not exist at these levels for long so it's it's up to people to kind of act or not well i will say that on the on the topic of whether the technology works i will tell you when it will work for people when the stock is over three dollars the technology will start working You're not wrong. I, I I think if if FOMO hits in the stock and you know the stock is actually trading as you said three dollars or more, um, suddenly everyone w wants it, and that that's when you know you're gonna get a crowd to trade it on this thing. I I so long as they continue executing, there's gonna be a point where this is gonna be a crowded trade. But the question is always, do you want to wait for that crowded trade to happen or do you want to be early? And I know the early um, until, as uh, Ryan was saying, until eight weeks ago, we didn't have a breadth that supports being early in small caps. Now, small caps in the U.S. are like two billion plus in market caps. So they're starting to get kind of a pulse. Microcaps will be next, and I, I think I'm of the view that, uh, you know, we will start seeing that in the next 12 months, so long as they continue executing, but I don't see a reason why not. You don't see an insider putting 600 grand of their own money when after 13 years of being in the name, again, you don't see a CFO putting 150 grand uh, in exercising warrants when the stock was 90 cents. Um, just because, you know, they they are first-hand people that are seeing way more things than we are. And as I was told many times in life, there are so many reasons for insiders to sell. There's one reason to buy. And, you know, they are, they, you know, they keep buying shares. So that, that's also another confirmation. Um, a lot of the takeaways I took from the webinar, and again, I want to invite the viewers, if you did not have a chance to review that webinar, um, closest uh, and easiest access to it is, is to follow Aduro Clean Technologies on Twitter. I find that to be the easiest access to information. But for me, uh, I really appreciated the further definition of the customer engagement program and the three tiers of potential revenues. Uh, Ofer spoke about, you know, the initial time frames of three to six months for the initials. You know, we talked about the technology working. Uh, we've talked about the stock price, but I think their execution along what was disclosed, the five majors, as well as 20 additional interested parties that uh, Aduro holds dossiers on, is going to be really an area of focus for me to see how they execute along this plan and how they graduate um you know your, your lower tier customers or your your minor needs as eric uh, so elegantly explained we didn't have color on that prior to how they were really going to put numbers to that customer engagement program and i i really appreciated that guys but i, I tell you when i looked at that time frame and saw 2027 just to bring it home, $3.50 is not going to move the needle for me. Um, I've got a first look at $10 on this thing. And if they can circumvent being bought out, um, this technology, everything I've looked at, and all of the attestation by upper management, um, $3.80 is not going to move the needle. I think inevitably we will be there. But if something that I was able to take away from the webinar and just keep it a little bit neutral and not get emotional is is that Aduro has doubled down on this you know three-year time horizon 
to make sure they're provided ample time to glean the data off of R2, alluding to those renderings going into R3, maybe as early as the back half of, of this year, but probably early 2025. And I just want to encourage investors really to look at this the way I do as a value play. I don't look at this as a penny stock. This is a value company. Um, and the only way to invest in this is, is ultra long. And not to suggest you can't make money in the short, but uh, an ultra long with a first look for me at 10 bucks is where I'm at. I'll yield back, Penny. Now, you, you brought up something that I think is really important. You said as long as they can avoid, you know, being being taken out somebody else buying them. Well, look how far they've come and how much they've protected ownership. They, you know, every time they do a raise, it is reasonable. It's exactly the amount they need. So they're, they're being good to shareholders. They're not, you know, they're not doing big, big raises, diluting us. They are keeping it as tight as possible. And that's because they clearly own a lot of the company. It dilutes them as well, but they're not, they're not, you know, given 10% of the company to somebody else so that they can get something done. They're proving things enough so that when they go out for a raise, it's people like us, it's other investors that say, yeah, I'm in. And then we all buy whatever it takes to get to that next, that next stage where they prove it further and further. So I, I think they've demonstrated a willingness to grow at the right at the right speed, at the right size each time. And I, I think that's that's critical to their their overall execution for shareholders in the long run. And yeah, you can you can play this as a day-to-day -day play. You know, you you can play it as, you know, hey, what's the one thing that's going to protect the rest of my portfolio for the year? Or you can play it, I, I think the way all of us are, where it's, you know, let me let me get this to the stage of being fully developed. Let's see where we're at there. And we've seen other companies, you know, get their version of a of a commercial plant up and have astronomical increases. And you know, that being with one type of plastic, not plastics, oils, renewables. You know, I mean, we're still really only talking about one of the three verticals of this company. And I I appreciate the way that they are not. Um, they're not being cavalier. Everything they do is measured like an engineer would do. So, all right. That's yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one last comment and then um, I'll hand over to kind of uh, you guys. One last thing that I really appreciate what what Adura has done is, if you look at the major names in the space that are all mainly kind of paralysis or you know, some iteration of it, um, you still find the same scenario where you'll find them that they're kind of associated with a name or two. So if you look at Angelix, they're kind of in, uh, they're hugged by ExxonMobil, namely. Um, if you look at PureCycle, they've licensed the technology from uh, Procter & Gamble. If you look at Mira, they're in bed with um, Dow. Um, which is not bad. I mean, I'm not dissing what they're doing because they've found a funder that is, a, or, you know, an associate that will provide them the feedstock, will provide them some money, will provide them the kind of the credibility so that they can raise money. But again, it's a central unit. It's, a, it's the same old technologies that we've talked about before. So what is, what I really like about the Duras technology is on the one vertical that we keep talking about, which is the plastics, they right now have four multi-billion dollar or th three multi-billion dollar companies there. Now, what? why is that important? Because they haven't had to give away exclusivity to any of these. What does that mean down the road? It means that you would become um, a very important to each one of these as the story progresses as the testing you know continues as success happens and at one point there will be conversations to be had about you know how do we license how do we uh get exclusivity on something and that is 
where it becomes very interesting. Now, imagine the 20 dossiers that Eric was talking about. What happens to that? At one point, there's going to be a premium that has to be paid. We don't know what that premium is. We, we can speculate. But again, just because of the liberty that they have by not being, you know, just hugged by one of these names gives them a lot of liberty, gives them a lot of, you know, room uh, to grow and um, not have to cave with one of them. And then again, on the, on the uh, heavy oil side, they have this confidential uh, multi-billion dollar company that is also, again, no exclusivity. They have Prospera, although Prospera is like a tiny company. And just think that what they're doing from, and again, I think because they are engineers, as Penny mentioned, they're also significant shareholders. They do realize that this is the way to create competition on the ultimate game for them, which is, you know, whether, whether it's a buyout or it's a, some form of that. Um, I think that so far has been very impressive for me. I want to touch a little bit on, on the theme uh, that Yazan was talking about. And I want to mention a company, Pure Cycle, because all of us uh, watch Pure Cycle. Pure Cycle has a market cap in US dollars over $600 million. After after they defaulted on the production goals for the 500 million debt, okay? I'm gonna repeat it again. They have over 600 million market cap after they screwed up the production goals, okay? And that just shows you the appetite that there can be for a solution like this. And we're, we're all biased. Pure Cycle doesn't even come close to what Aduro has. And they have 10 times the amount of debt and 10 times the market cap that Aduro has after they screwed up. So that's the theme that you know we're sitting on. And if we can get a little bit of that theme coming on the Aduro side with such a small share structure, it could get very interesting very fast. I I think the the roadmap over the next three years certainly will will become interested. Uh, there was a question that came through uh, during the Q and A session. Thought it was a little bit premature about uplisting to the Nasdaq, and I thought Mena did a fantastic job of addressing that, and quickly alluding to the fact that the company just went QX which I think in and of itself is a milestone for the company with regard to the audit scrutiny that the company will endure as opposed to being a part of the, the, the larger pool in OTC markets. I think in due time that will be inevitable, but I just appreciated his comment on that because once you uplist, and I've seen this before on companies that I've covered, once you uplist, you, you now get a target whether or not you want it or not. I think just to allude to what Penny was talking about earlier on in the discussion, I like where we're positioned. Um, that that might be my biased position, or as you might suggest, Mariusz, right, coming from more of a bullish perspective. I, I try to draw down and be as neutral as I can on that, but it's very, very difficult to do so because, you know, it, not to use Eric Appleman's words, it, he they, they've internally scrutinized this uh, and Naria have found a problem specifically with the technology. So... Um, I'm closely monitoring it. Um, I'd like to see some 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 emboldening of the financial statements, uh, some strengthening on that. I, I wish I would have heard a little bit more from Mena on the um, on the webinar with regard to a little bit of forecasting. You know, we heard some numbers come through uh, on these customer engagement numbers. You know, in the twenty-five to fifty thousand on the low end. 100,000 on the higher end. And then Ofer actually threw out the million, the million dollar mark as the collaboration stage, presuming that they can move through those stages of, of customer engagement. So it certainly added some color around that, which I did appreciate. But um, 
yeah, I just wanted to add to that where I just think we need to be a little bit patient on rushing this company to the NASDAQ. Um, yeah, I, I just want to add one point. He did mention that the testing at this stage can be anywhere between, I'd say, uh, uh, if I recall, it's a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars. The way that I look at it is literally that that is a another uh, lever that they use to reduce dilution. Because warrants coming in means that cash is coming in means that they don't need to dilute. But the fact that these testings are happening is literally another source that reduces our burn while the company is learning more while the data is coming in because I heard one of the one of the comments that I I read they were like uh, you know R3 is now going to be like in early to mid 2025 you know they said end of 2024 first of all six months is not even like it's a rounding error but let's let's think of it from another standpoint which is when you're testing a new technology, the best thing you do is you get more data. And here's the funny part is you're testing at the expense of someone else. So if someone else is paying for you to test, get more information, more intel, then move to the next scale, <sighs> sign me up. That's a smart business decision not to rush things up. Now, having said that, they are they are in the as Ofer said, they are in the process of you know moving towards R three. My thinking, though, is you know again, I always like to look at it from both sides. If the other side keeps seeing good good things, do they really need to wait? Do they not come in and say we want to have exclusivity on something? but we're going to fund this R3. It could happen. So I think the possibilities here are a lot. And that's why I think I get extremely excited whenever I hear the business side. I get equally frustrated about the, the market gap. But I'm also, I try to kind of, you know, think of it like this is truly a pure VC play. I don't think um, if you're putting your money, think it, it's better to think of it as if you buy at 80 cents US or a dollar US or whatever, it doesn't really make that bigger difference because people like yourself, Ryan and Penny and everyone on the, on here, I don't think we're invested for this to be a, it's either going to be a 10 X or it's not that those are the two options that I think. I don't think it's it's somewhere in, in, in the middle. Um, we're, we're starting to approach the 45 minute mark, guys, and I just want to give a plug and a thank you for Mariush and Penny for making their way on. The biggest thank I can make, they're both uh, featured channels, the Independent Investor Channel. Please seek out their information. They are held in the highest regard as far as I'm concerned. Uh, for covering the microcap space, and we're lucky to have them. And and a final thank you to Yazan as well. Uh, your insights are invaluable, my friend. Thank you so much for the time. But I want to give everybody the the opportunity as we close this down, in fairness to our viewers here, try to keep this around 45 minutes, an opportunity for a last word and perspective and reaction to the webinar from earlier on uh, this week. I'll Anybody can take that panel. Thanks. I'll go ahead and go. I basic, exactly what I said before, it was for the confirmation of everything we've seen this year, we're picking up momentum, we're picking up lots of big players in the industry, which is further proof that they understand our technology is real, and the company is doing right by shareholders. So I'm in. Uh, I'll go and say, first of all, I, I want to thank you, say thank you to the Adura team, um, I really think that, you know, it. a lot of times we forget the people behind the scenes, the 15 plus people that are at the lab, the people, the business, the, the actual families that are actually driving this to after 13 years to get it to where it's at. 
um, and extend that obviously to Ofer, Eric, Amina, uh, and even the rest of the team. And I want to say, you know, clearly thank you guys because if if it wasn't for the three here that are talking about this name, then this name would have been, you know, they would have had to dilute further. They would have had to go other means to get to where they're at. So I think getting the word out is something that is very important. Um, and I also want to wish you, wish you all a Merry Christmas and happy, happy holidays. Okay, I'm going to go last. So... Um... The thing that I wanted to say is that the way the way Aduro we covered Aduro, all of us is just information. We're providing you information about the company. Now, if you like it, do more research. If you don't like it, change the channel. Okay. Uh, but here's what we have: we have a worldwide problem, and we have a company that has a solution, and we have indication after indication after indication that there's a solution all this is happening while the micro cap space small cap space has gone through absolute devastation that we haven't seen in 25 years the fed just said they're going to raise uh, lower interest rates the raise of the raising of interest rates uh pulled out all the liquidity from the micro cap space now they're going to go the reverse so I don't know if I've ever seen a better setup for the micro cap stocks in general to just knock the socks off everything. And I'm talking about, you know, good names. If, if you're sitting on bad names, you know, nothing is going to save you. But if, you, if you're sitting on a, you know, good company, good business, good technology, good solution during a time where I think the tide is going to turn, it could get very explosive. Uh, and we all believe that, you know, Aduro has the goods and Aduro is going to benefit from it. And we all put money behind this. Now, as an investor, it's your choice. Do some work and see if you see what we see. And if you don't, that's okay. You know, there's plenty of other names that you can go after. So with that being said, thanks, Ryan, for doing this. Thank you, Marius. And um, I'll close by saying this. Um, do your own due diligence for sure. If you decide not to, that's okay. Um, just as of late, I've decided to double up my position uh, on a number of different fronts. We've talked about valuation in this panel. We have talked about the technology. We have talked about the strategic direction in the addressable market. We have talked about the solidification of the team and really the expansion of the team globally. Um, Eric Appleman being one of those um, really nice bullish pieces for me as to the uh, leadership uh, in this. And it really fits into um, my holistic picture of this just being one of the best opportunities that I've seen in my 25 years of, of looking at investing. Um, maybe it 10 X's, maybe it doesn't. Um, that's for you to decide. Going into 2024, as we close down 2023, I want you to realize a couple of things. Um, there was 110 patrons to that message. Me personally, I was a little disappointed in that. With the magnitude of this opportunity, um, I would expect that the floodgates do at some point eventually open up on this name. Uh, shares will become, in short order, uh, hard to get a hold of. Better to get in early than to get in late. If you're waiting, I don't know what for what. Um, we will continue to provide as much transparency as I can through our three networks. So stand by on that as we enter into 2024. Subscribe to each of our respective channels. Have a Merry Christmas to all. Thank you to the panel for your time. Be safe, and we will catch you next year as we reconvene on the uh, Aduro Clean Technology story as we evolve in 2024 and beyond. Thank you to the panel.